world remembers the elusive bow upgrade rumor, which refuses to die even to this day. So the fact that there actually is a bow upgrade of sorts in Thief 3 is hysterically funny. So, we have completed the objective. Read the letter the hammer-eyed inspector drept is left for you. It is on the table in front of Artemis. And we have notes. The hammers have requested favors to improve your faction status with them. Kill rust mites with broadhead arrows and kill any undead. Of course, reasons that I'm not doing this. A brief recap. First, killing rust mites and killing undead are straight up violations of the ghost rules. The only way that I could justify this is if I decided that this side mission, this faction favor, qualified as an objective, which entitled me to break a rule and say it was okay. I just don't think it does that. The second reason I'm not going to, I just, it seems out of character for Garrett to care whether or not the Hammerites like him. And finally, with the factions, it's just easier for me to, you'll notice they said that your faction status goes down if you're caught stealing or attacking one of them. Well, if you get them up and allied with you, you can just walk right in and take things and your faction status will go down, but no one will indicate whether they saw you take it or not. Whereas if you remain undetected, your faction status stays where it is. So I would rather just steal stuff and have it be clear whether or not I was detected instead of having to jump in and check the faction menu and leaving them hostile is an easy way to do that. They'll alert if they see me. So let's move on. There's another note to read right here. Scribe, when you are completely done with your other tasks, go to the Forbidden Library and retrieve for me the map of the Keeper compound. I left it on the second floor, Elder Draco. That gives us yet another new note, which is... A map to the Keeper compound is in the Forbidden Library on the second floor. That's straightforward enough. This area is still okay to be in. There's a gold goblet to steal, worth 75, and another note to read. The trouble started when I asked permission to leave the library in order to visit the compound and begin research for a new paper, a treatise on us, on keepers, our history and founding principles. To my knowledge, no such book has been written yet, and it seemed a worthy endeavor. My proposal, my proposal was well thought out and included chapters on balance and the powers of glyphs. However, permission to visit the compound was not granted me. In fact, my request was met with surprise and outright suspicion. Surely my idea was a good one, and I would be thorough in my research and truthful in my conclusions. But saying so only seemed to trouble the elders further. Then today my duties were reduced. Could it be related to my request? And if so, why? I'm afraid to press these questions further. Besides, who would I ask? Ooh, undercurrents of intrigue. So, there's a switch on the floor here, which you can step on. This is still safe. Let's try out our new door glyph. Just right click and anywhere you found a glyph like that, the wall will just disappear. You may, oh, I think that just opens it. I don't think you can reclose that bookcase. But here is an alternate entrance to the Forbidden Library, one we'll want to take. So I'm gonna start by listening to another conversation. What is your opinion? About the libraries? I think Orland is right to restrict Garrett's movements. These books are far too valuable to risk. Besides, there's nothing here in the Forbidden Libraries that a thief would want, would want, unless that thief were the brethren and betrayer our Cataca seeks. Then you do not believe. What, the prophecies? I believe. I just don't believe it's Garrett to which they refer. Perhaps Orland is the one. Or one of us, perhaps. It seems logical it would be an elder. We alone possess the knowledge and skill. Indeed. So you think it is folly to accept Garrett in our midst? His aid with the coming Dark Age will prove ineffective? Of course. What can he do that we, all of us, cannot do? I wish I were as sure as you, Elder Callow. Uh-huh. So when they're done talking, grab a rare book off of a stand over here. 
Rare books are worth a hundred, so they're pretty good loot. And then, move across this room. That door on the other side leads right out to where that guard was standing. Now, if you so much as get spotted in here, your game will end. So you have to be very careful. The keepers are wasting their time writing about me. I'm a thief and a good one, but I've got nothing to do with their prophecies. The Matter of Garrett by Keeper Draco. Familiarizing yourself with Garrett's history and capabilities could prove essential should the time come when we no longer deem him necessary. Garrett studied with us until his early 20s, at which time he was offered the chance to proceed with the indoctrination ceremony and become a keeper. However, he lacked balance and instead expressed his intention to leave. The council voted we deal with him using the enforcers until Kataka informed us that Garrett was essential to overcoming difficult times ahead. And so our most promising acolyte left us. Garrett pursued the life of a criminal, and with the keeper training we had given him, he quickly became a master thief. His abilities did not escape attention of certain individuals, and he was lured into a pagan plot that threatened the safety of the city. During that time, Garrett's eye was removed and used to power the eye, one of the artifacts we are studying. See O'Gilvy's treatise on sentience for more regarding the artifacts. After the threat was neutralized, Garrett obtained a mechanical eye from the Hammerites. Later, his thieving abilities revealed an excessive imbalance within the Hammerite order. See the Mechanist Metal Age for more on this topic. True to Kataka's predictions, Garrett had the abilities necessary to remove the threat and overcome our second trial. Now Kataka has predicted a third Dark Age, and she believes Garrett will play a critical role, though the glyphs have yet to reveal if he will influence the outcome positively or negatively. So you want to head into here next, but you have to be careful because the other keep- grab that rare book on the way up, another 100. The other keeper is patrolling a circle in here. So just stick nice and cozy behind her. Read this. Keeper Dover, journal entry number 2136. I should have known better than to bring it up in front of the entire council. Still, my words had some effect. At least now there is the resolution forbidding it. I believe that will cause many to think twice should the temptation arise. Meanwhile, we should all be on the watch for the tale t telltale signs. The dead animals, their life force is drained. It is not the love of creatures that compels me to speak so. No, they are pitiable but inconsequential. I can only speculate on how long a keeper could extend a normal lifespan in this way. A hundred? Two hundred years? Maybe longer. But it would take more than vermin to accomplish that. And I, now that I possess the knowledge, can I truly say I too am not tempted? This is why I cannot remain silent. That and the glyph that Elder Beryl speculates must exist, though we have yet to find, one that enables shape-shifting. Shape what a potent elixir of glyph magics that would be. So she's yellow alerted to the rare book downstairs being missing. I, of course, am going to hover over here so I can pickpocket her wand when she makes another pass. Nothing after all. See how the mind plays tricks. My game's getting awfully jumpy, so I'm going to do a real save right quick just to make absolutely certain none of my progress is lost if it crashes again. Anyway, one other thing regarding factions, I kind of did it already, but at this point, since you can, if you want to, choose to eliminate the Rust Mites and Moss the Cornerstones, I will point them out again in each segment of, section of the city as I pass by them. I am sure I had my wand, but now it is missing. Unsettling. Yeah, why don't you cry about it? So I'm going to wait for her to be well out of sight, take an and then hand. drop How could he claim drop that? the wand on her patrol route. Now, as we get up to the second floor, the Forbidden Library has the most interesting stuff by far. But you see, the guard patrolling carries a torch. 
he also has a pickpocket we do need to get. He always has that purse. It resets every day. So I'm going to read this. Transcript of Keeper Council Meeting 1054-36-XLVII. So I don't know if they're shifting between Roman numerals and normal numerals. If I if it was Roman numerals, that would be a 47, right? Yeah. Xavier, Keeper Beryl has the floor. Beryl, I thank the Council and the First Keeper. Today I have repaired a report on the backgrounds of several missing Keepers. My goal was to find common elements in their research that might lead to an explanation for their disappearances. Although there was no one thing they had in common, I believe I have found at least tangential evidence that they could be related. I'll start with Keeper Dover, whom you will remember for his rather unpopular theories about the nature of prophecy and especially his interest in corruption. Tabor. Keeper Beryl, the Council does not need a discourse on each missing Keeper. Have you found a common element to their research or not? Beryl. Well, it's not that simple. I was trying to explain. Sovine. Perhaps Keeper, Keeper Beryl has found several themes they all had in common. Beryl. If the Council pleases, I have organized a report and would like to continue with my presentation. Tabor. I move that this information be disseminated outside of the Council forum so that each of us can review Beryl's findings separately. If necessary, the subject can be brought up at a subsequent meeting. Beryl. With respect to Keeper Tabor and all those present, this very subject has been delayed by the Council before, and I... Xavier. Enough. This meeting will be adjourned for now. Keepers Tabor and Beryl will report to me in my quarters immediately. So getting his purse isn't that bad. It's easiest for me to just kind of wait for him in one of these shadows and move in on him after he picks a direction and turns. Of course, if you don't mind a green alert, excuse me, it's very easy to pick his pocket because he'll just, uh, he'll pause and you can move in behind him and nab his goodies, but I got the purse. 50 gold. Keeper is seldom the victim of a pickpocket. Okay, if he's coming this way again, then I want to just get back in here because it's where the other good stuff is for this floor. So on this little end table, we find the map. That's the map of the Keeper compound, which we'll go to much later. Gas bomb and two flash bombs on this little shelf. Let me turn the other way this time. That's good, I guess. I want to make sure there's nothing else to read up here. I'm pretty sure there's not. So let's move up toward the third floor. In this room, there is a bird statuette on top of the bookshelf. And more, re more to read. The Pagan Situation by Keeper Tallow. The pagans have begun to infiltrate into more areas using decaying infrastructure to mask their presence. They now have sanctuaries in almost every district. Diane, their high priestess, was the successor to the pagan leadership after the wood nymph Victoria was desiccated. Diane is, Diane's is often seen with a staff, although it has not been available for study. Her commander, Larkspur, is aggressive and dangerous. The two control a large number of shamans who invoke the powers of plants both to hurt and to heal. I believe the pagans are able to accelerate plant growth such that it could rapidly culminate in a great imbalance. Recommend further observation. So as we move up to the third floor, you'll see a scribe seated at a desk, but he's no problem at all to sneak around. Smooth. Move around behind him. See, those little hiccups have me... They've got me thinking my game is going to crash any minute, so... Grab the rare book just past the scribe. So if my game does crash, I apologize, but... You know, I'll just reload to save and start recording again. Up here on the third floor... Just one guard patrolling back and forth. At this end of his patrol... Under this end table, there's a little statuette. 
I don't think there's anything over here on the left side, but always pays to double check. Over on this end of his patrol, there is a silver candlestick up on the shelf. And then over to the right, there are some goodies. Missing. Okay, he yellow alerted over the missing statue. But on top of this shelf, there's a copper urn worth a hundred. And Where was I? there's a book. Guiding Acolytes to Their Destiny, Part 7, Enforcers, The Will of the Keepers. The call of the Enforcer is a strong one. Those who wish to augment their strength and swiftness, and those who wish to protect the balance at all costs, are drawn to this dominion. Acolytes should note that once indoctrinated, an Enforcer can only communicate telepathically. The Enforcer's education consists of all manner of stealth training, and specialized weaponry must be mastered. After taking the vow, the glyphs are applied, and the transformation takes place immediately. Once converted by the glyphs, there is no known way of countering the changes. Elders who are guiding acolytes along this path should take care in revealing the most sensitive aspects of the sacrifices involved. So, his yellow alert has settled down, which is good. Bring me to the reference stack again. Reference stack again. Stay close. I am tired tonight. Without my sight, I fear I shall fall. Come, we have just a bit more work to complete before so we So we need to get rest. down this hallway. This is Interpreter Katika. She's pretty easy to sneak behind. She just hangs out on this balcony and paces back and forth. So when we slip into the room behind her, on, the di on this table you can find a gold goblet and a rare book. And then over in the bookshelf... There's a button which opens this bookcase into the secret room. A secret room, eh? Always my favorite room. So in, in here, the house. there are two more statuettes and another gold goblet and one last book to read. Thorinson, an acolyte scribed this passage yesterday. Sound familiar? Meet me. I sold. The safeguard against the evil ones will be found, the last of all glyphs that all can view but none can see. The eye will be borne by the one who will not yet bear the mark. Between the two, none shall come until the unwritten times are upon us. And that's it. We have cleared the library. It's finally time to leave. Now that door you can reclose. So I'm gonna do that, of course. Sneak back behind Katika. It's best to wait until you see the keeper walk away. And just get out of here the same way we came in. Down these stairs. Oh, I know what those little hiccups are. They're nothing to worry about. Never mind. It's just when uh, Fraps runs out of room on one video and starts a new one that I'll have to compress and splice together when I'm finished recording. Okay. The game still very well might crash any second. I mean, just... Such are the wages of playing computer games, but I'm no longer worried that it's in imminent because of those hiccups, which is good. So let's creep down here. I believe it's smartest to, oh, well, she's right there. I was going to say it's smartest to wait until we see her. First keeper Orland this, first keeper Orland that. As if we should forget. Oh good, they don't like Orland either. That's nice to know. Of course they... Not enough precautions. Oh, I told them there were dangers. They didn't want to hear They make me. Orland too much of a jerk for him to actually be the bad guy. They telegraph it way too much, you know what I mean? 
Now she doesn't stop down here, so once she's back upstairs, or moving back upstairs, we still have to worry about getting through this door. Just wait until you hear that little pause, which meant, means he's made his turn and is heading back. And once we get through this door, we no longer have to sneak. So we get up and we move on. Finally time to leave the library, folks. From here, it's actually very simple. Just head back to where we met with Keeper I Sold A, or I Sold, or however you pronounce it, and the exit's right there. And we're back to Stone Market Plaza. There's one thing we can do here now. Well, two if you're, uh, if you're doing faction favors, you can take out two Rust Mites now. The first one is up here at the top I of these stairs. Well you. To you. Taking out Rust Mites is difficult because they explode with the volume generated if you shoot a fire arrow. So you have to make sure no one's around. You also notice that the streets have populated with, in some places, Hammerites and in some places, Pagans. The downside to my decision not to do their favors, of course, is that those guys will attack us on sight, so we have to sneak around them. But those two that have spawned in have a conversation I want to listen to, so I'm going to try to get close enough to listen in without letting them see me. This should work. Tis no sin, Brother Griswold. No sin, but tis not the Builder's work. He cavorts with common city folk, and he comes not to services. Brother Dremt has permission to scour the city for this murderer, this hag, which he has sought these many years. Thou hast just reminded me of another thing. He has asked to be called Inspector Drept, not Brother. Surely it is not allowed. It is a transgression indeed, but none that worries me over much, Brother Griswold. Then hearken to one more grievance, Brother Menden, that he has spent much time in the aiding of a known thief, a non-believer, a heathen to be sure, the very thief that did steal the chalice from St. Edgar's. This too I know. It was Brother Drept's own idea to enlist Garrett in aiding our cause. Only time will tell if it was right to do so. It is not for us to judge. Not yet. Then thou wilt not call him for penitence? No flogging? No male shirt? Nothing? May the Builder see fit to guide us to the right path. Aim in there. Don't even the world, ask. Brother Griswold. But I will not punish my own. Not when the forces of the trickster do surround me in the night. So there's that. The, uh... We need to avoid them, of course. Down this ramp, you'll find a couple of things. There's the second rust mite you can kill if you're so inclined. The thing I am going to do is open up this keeper storage cell that we couldn't interact with before and get the two silver coins off the shelf in here. It's tough to convince Garrett not to grab that junk wine bottle, but it's possible. It's actually easier if you stand back. Anyway, two silver coins, 50 each, and I'm just gonna head to South Quarter. I'm gonna, again, I can't clear Stone Market proper, until I have the climbing Amen. gloves, so Amen. I'm gonna go get those. Oh so, South Quarter. I'm gonna make a real save here at the entrance to South Quarter. I just feel like having the uh, library cleared out is a 
worthwhile spot to do that. Now, if you're if you're going after them, you can go ahead and kill the three rust mites in South Quarter. The first one is right here at the exit from Stone Market. The second one is over here in the fountain area in the southeast corner. The third And I'm just headed toward the How docks entrance. Good evening to you. Remember, there's a watchman patrolling over here. And we'll have to sneak past. But that's easy enough to do, given the shadows in the street. So just follow him down. And right there in front of the docks entrance, you see the third rust mite in South Quarter. So if you had been going after them, that would be five total that you should have killed. Uh, this place is losing with rats. So if you break left of the official docks entrance, you'll find a door glyph, and Garrett will brief us on the docks on the other side of this load zone. The docks, the poor part of town, full of cramped tenements and surly residents. I wouldn't come here looking for a helping hand, but it's the right place to hire a few murderous thugs, or for those who are in the market for something rare and exotic. Precious imports from ships are stored here until they're moved to more wealthy districts, so the docks can be a good place to rob, as long as you keep an eye out for fishy characters, and of course, the city watch. The quarantine still has the docks cut off from the other districts, but the keeper Dorglyph got me past the gates. Working with the keepers isn't all bad, I guess, and I have a hunch I'm in the right place to return the favor. If the keepers are right and there's a dark age coming, then docks is where to start searching for it. It's about as dark as this city gets. So, the very first thing I'm gonna do is head left over toward the old quarter entrance. There's a crime report for the docks, but it's empty, because, you know, we weren't even in the docks yesterday. Here is the entrance to the old quarter, which we still can't pass through, and the torch right there is a fire arrow to grab. I'm gonna get the climbing gloves first, so I can fully clear everything. So you see the, uh, you see the watchman there. He takes his sweet time, but he eventually patrols up here, goes all the way up to the old quarter entrance, and then comes all the way back. I'm gonna bounce down into the sewers now, just to grab a water arrow. I'm going to do the Overlook Mance first, before the Sunken Citadel. You can do them in either order, of course, but... Down here, first there's the water arrow. That's the entrance to the Sunken Citadel, if you want to tackle that mission first. But... I'm not gonna do much work clearing the docks right now. I'm just gonna... You know, get the things that are convenient and on my way. Well, I guess I'll clear everything north of the store after I get the climbing gloves, but save the eastern... The store here in the docks is a great place to shop for interesting items. I should stop in. Of course we should. Greetings, and thank you for shopping at the Undercurrent. Sam Swarthy, proprietor, at your service. Mm, I, I've been working on a motto, but it ain't done yet. So just get shopping. So in here, we can buy the silver practice lock, which I will do. I'm sure you'll be pleased with your purchase. Any problems, eh, then contact the manufacturer directly. Best to leave me out of it. And then, of course, we can buy the climbing gloves. 
Climbing gloves. With these gloves, you can climb any surface made of stone blocks or bricks. Jump into walls to climb them. So with that done, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to clear the docks first. So, as we move over here to the east of the store, there's a fire arrow in this torch. Which we'll want to grab. And then these two watchmen are going to have a conversation we'll want to listen to. That sure is a fine-looking plant. Sure would spruce up my place a bit. <laughs> Too bad I can't bring it home. Wouldn't want it in my place. Only reason it's here is because they think it could be dangerous. Dangerous? You mean poisonous or all prickly or something? No. Don't you ever listen to the captain. The pagans were pretty upset when we got to it before them. They were gonna plant it someplace special or something. I figure it's got some pagan witchery attached to it. Oh, I see. Or I don't. It don't make sense. Why'd we take their plant away, even if it is a bit witchy? They got all kinds of herby plants, and I don't see us holding them under lock and key. Because the Hammerites tipped off the captain, said the pagans were going to use it for no good or something. This here's some kind of extra rare type of greenery. Anyway, them hammers are so scared of it, they wanted to burn it up in one of their furnaces. Would have, too, except the captain wanted to get to the bottom of things, so locked it up here instead. Don't that mean that both the pagans and the hammers will be angry with the cappy? Uh, at us? Maybe even, uh, try and break in and get it? Didn't think of it that way, but yeah, I guess you're right. Watch your back, eh, Freddy? Yeah, you too. You too. So there's another new note. Day three is busy, I told you. We've been in here for a while. But, uh... We've got a note that the City Watch are holding a pagan sapling. The pagans want it planted in their hideout. The hammers want it burned, which can be done in the tavern. I'm gonna steal the sapling, but I'm not gonna do either. I don't know, that just amuses me. So, once they're done talking, can move this way. There's a note to read. Timmy, we ain't got room in the warehouse right now. Boss says not until Friday. Your best bet is shipping it all out from there and hoping it don't rain. Hope there's nothing too valuable in that cargo. Anyways, sorry about the mix-up, Bill. So, let's just grab the sapling and break to the right. Criminals, thieves, thugs, hooligans, watch out. So over here, there's another conversation to listen to before we do anything else. Sure are a lot of them. What? Zombies. Yeah, they came from that ship, poor bastards. The abysmal gale. And call me crazy, but they a bit more riled up than normal. They're just a bit on the testy side, you know. Did you find that Probably guy who stole my purse yet? Wet. No, of course Idiot. not. Wet or dry, zombies don't care. Oh, like you're an expert. Anyway, don't worry. If one of them gets you, eh, I'll be happy to cut your leg off. Or whatever it is you're supposed to do. Taffer, you only cut off my leg if that's where one of them gets me. See? Otherwise, there's no point. All right, all right, don't get so mad. I'm just saying I help you out in a pinch. That's all. Well, it makes me mad that I got to explain these things all the time. So there's a water arrow in this pipe to the left. It's a good thing to grab. When they're done talking, on the docks ahead of us to the left, there are a couple of things. First... <laughs> Another sign to read. These will become relevant later. Wait for the watchman to leave. You'll note some coins on top of the crate here. I'll go ahead and grab those. 25. First landing marker. Venerates the location where the first settlers are believed to have come ashore. The old gray lady is after me. She wants my shoes and she wants my skin. It's not so small that she can't fit in. Uh-oh. Hello. There I was about to get punished by Garrett's inability to swim. So, I want to... I trust all's well with you? Oh, shut it, will ya? 
There we go, that's better. It can be tough to time these two patrollers, but... We do need to get Benny's health potion, because it's a set pickpocket. It's always there. It respawns every day. And that's not the only thing over here. We need to get to the right without triggering any comments from him or the other guard. That wasn't so bad. So if we go over to this crate in the southwest corner, you can get two broadhead arrows off the top of it. And then, if the timing is right, which it's not, you can get up that ladder. <clears throat> So, I'm going to need to wait until Benny turns around. True. Critters can see things we can. And I'll probably have to wait for this other guard to patrol away too. I was worried he was going to come all the way over and spot me the way he was acting. But I should be okay. I think the timing is going to work out just fine here. Excuse me. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Something move. I got nailed. I got nailed because that little jackass blocked me from going up the ladder. Unbelievable. Nice night. What's with the friendly bit? That I'm not gonna tolerate, sorry. Sorry, Gov. Up, up, up. There you go. When you get up here, there's the first rust mite you'd have to kill in the docks. I wonder if it's true. Critters can see things we can't. You know, I've never seen it go off the edge like that, but... Anyway, that would be your sixth rust mite if you were following along with me. Once you're up here, you can pretty easily creep along this pipe, no problem. And from here, you can break into the tavern through the window. Very straightforward, very nice. Oh, are you kidding me? He wouldn't hear me if I ran along the pipe, but he heard those shutters close. Oh well, just have to wait for him to patrol away. So I'm gonna clear the tavern, I'm gonna get his potion. Well, that's proof to me that you probably could kill all the rust mites without alerting th everyone. Because the trick is to herd them away, which you can all usually do. I tried for hours once to knock him off the edge of the platform and it never happened and that time it just crawled right off. From there I imagine you could herd it somewhere where they couldn't hear you kill it and you'd be fine. But I digress. Oh, I don't think he heard me close the shutters. No, I think he heard the either the crate or the chair jostle. That makes more sense. Anyway, you open the chest up here. There's a jade ring inside, worth 50. And through this door, if you head to the left, you can find a copper fork on the shelf, worth 25. Head down to the first floor. There's there are a few things to find. On the table, there's reading material. The City Chronicle Extra Doomed Vessel arrives in docks. 
The merchant ship Abysmal Gale floated into port on Sunday with its captain and crew of 28 either missing or dead. Witnesses say the vessel, formerly under the command of Captain Robert Moira, seemed to steer on its own. Now under City Watch investigation, the curious are warned to keep their distance from the boat. Officer Dirk Lamar explains, With this here cursed ship, you got your zombies, you got your ghosts, plus all the dangers of a regular ship. Drowning, splinters, what have you. With that said, this is one reporter that will indeed be keeping her distance. Additional reports indicate the possibility that undead who disembarked from the vessel may be congregating in or around the sewers. See Mavenstock. On the table up by the fireplace, and I need to be certain nobody alerts to this, there's a copper comb worth 50. In the fireplace is a fire arrow. And behind the bar itself, you can nab a copper goblet worth 25. With that done, I'm gonna pick the lock on this door and something funny is gonna happen when I do. Let's see, it's left, down, left, up. That's for dang darn shit. It's the same as our landlord's. Once this door is unlocked, Benny... It's a waste, is what it is. ...expands his patrol. And he heads over here. Well, live and learn. Live and learn. He'll patrol into the tavern now, which of course affords us a wonderful opportunity to grab his potion. Bam. So with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the abysmal gale. Then I'll finish clearing the docks, and then sweep on back through uh, South Quarter, all the way to Stone Market proper to finish up day three. Here we are in the abysmal gale. This place is good. I like the atmosphere on the ship. It's, it's good. Just the sound in this game is amazing. What happened here? Maybe there's something in the ship's manifest or the captain's log. So, boarding the ship gives us another new objective, which is get to the cargo hold down below, then find and read the ship's manifest for clues about the compendium of reproach. All right, easy enough. When you enter the ship, to the right, you can find a holy water. The holy water flask bursts on impact, creating a puddle of holy water. Throw it at undead to damage them. Now if we head up to the left, the first cabin on the left, on top of the crate is a copper candlestick. Have to be careful because picking it up causes the crates to shift. Of course, the problem with sneaking through the abysmal gale is that I have a lot of trouble sometimes distinguishing first alert sounds from a zombie's normal mutterings. I tend, I usually ultimately end up relying on waiting until I see them pause in their patrols or some easy sign to keep track of like that. So anyway, when he heads into this room on the right, it's easy enough just to follow him in. He'll roll up to this crate, which has another holy water flask for us to grab. We can then move out behind him into this last cabin on the left. There's a zombie on the floor, which you need to keep a wide berth, give a wide berth. There's a healing potion in here, as well as a jade ring over in the far corner, which is worth another 50 loot. We'll tackle the captain's cabin next. I think that was a first alert, so I'm gonna reload. Green alert, rather. First and second is the language of Thief and Thief 2. Obviously, I'm not as familiar with this patrol route as I need to be. So if he's coming down here, that means I can 
stay where I saved until I see him walk away. That actually makes things easier. So we'll just wait for him to turn around, and then we'll cross the hallway behind him and head up the stairs. So up these stairs. I wish they had turned this into a whole level, I really do. I mean, I think it's just, I think it's atmospherically spectacular, and I love the sounds of the zombies, but I digress. There's so many things that I wish they did differently in Thief 3, and almost all of them involve giving me more of the good things. So inside the captain's cabin, the first thing to do is creep across here and get into the shadow to the left of this chest and very quickly pick the lock left right left get back to the shadow now he will green alert when this is opened oh maybe not that suggests he might not green alert if it's closed if I wait for him to get to the far end either Anyway, inside that chest, there was a ruby ring worth 75 and a copper coin worth 25. Maybe if I wait for him to get all the way across the room, I can actually close this without a green alert. I opened it without one. Be careful not to bump any of the junk in here or he will hear it. This is the captain's cabin, if it wasn't obvious. I don't know whether this zombie was once the good Captain Moira or not. Well, how about that? You can loot the chest without a green alert. Here's the captain's log. Day 42. Cookout did himself tonight. A fine meal. At least at the officer's table. And why not? We've done well on this trip, and tomorrow morning I'll announce to the men that we'll be steering for home. I'm looking forward to seeing my Edwina. I guess a scarf of hers is just as good a lucky piece as that telescope of mine. Day 43. Weather's been fine. We got a full hold and are heading for home. Should be there unless the... And the journal cuts off. We were hoping to learn what happened to the ship. No such luck. So, after reading the log and gaining nothing but flavor from it, you just want to cross while the zombie's over by the chest. And then... Make sure you don't get spotted by anybody on the left. <clears throat> and... Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. No, I'm not confused. The way down is to head down this hall to where you see this fallen door. Head to the right through here, being careful of the patrolling zombie and just drop through the hole. If you get all the way down to the bottom, you can find a holy water in the southeast corner. As you move to the north, next to the collapsed door, you can find a jade necklace worth 50. And then mantle onto those crates, head up this wooden plank and mantle to the mid-level of the ship. Turn left, and in this room, the floor of this room, you can find two broadhead arrows. Now there's another patrolling zombie on this level. Once you get a beat on where he is, get into this door across the room, across the hall rather. You'll notice, of course, another prone zombie in the northeast corner. You want to give a wide berth to him. Inside this chest, you can find a copper ring and a copper bracelet worth 25 and 75, respectively. And then I find it best to lean on this door. 
the zombie's standing right outside right now. So we want to wait until we hear him leave before we open the door and head south down the hall after him. I think I heard him walking just then. Yep. So, as you have your opening to move south, do so, then immediately break into this little eastern section. You see another wooden plank leading down. There's another patrolling zombie to worry about who comes into this room from the hallway. You see him there, he, he green alerted to my landing, but it's uh, quite possible to get down without any alerts from him, so that merits a reload. There we go. Now in this hold, there are two chests. This one, oh, he green alerted to me opening it. I misread him, I thought he was heading off down the hall, which he does, and when he does, you can open those chests without alerts, but have to wait for him to move in and out of this room, which is no problem. The other chest is over there in the southeast corner, just past where he's standing. But he'll leave the room, and he'll turn left, and once he's around that corner, it's pretty safe to open the chests. Inside that one is a copper comb, worth 50. And in the corner, are your copper coins, which are worth 25. Oh, he green alerted. He green alerted when I closed the chest, but he was at the far end of his patrol, so that might be unavoidable. Then again, he should have heard the... He might have heard that accidental footstep clanging on the metal. That actually seems more likely to me. Yeah, that's as far away as he gets, so if he did green alert, then there's not really any, any way to avoid it. Anyway, we're almost done here. If you head to the north down this hall... Oh, he saw me. Damn. 